So thank you for inviting me. So since I'm talking about, so let me just give you a bit of background about the program in South Africa. So since uh, uh, democracy in 1994, there has been a lot of effort in the vaccination program. A lot of vaccines have been introduced. And this was the schedule in 2009. We were the first country in uh, Africa to introduce nationwide the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine. And in 2014, we introduced the HPV vaccine, which was the new kid in the block then, and we give it in schools uh, to girls uh, in grade four. So, but despite all of this effort, we are not, the coverage is not very high. We have about one in three kids are not uh, receiving the vaccines. And um, we've just used here the third dose of the diphtheria, tetanus, and peltosis vaccine, which is given at 14 weeks. Uh, the, the country, of <coughs> course, there's a the, this, uh, problem with the data quality. The, the blue one is the estimate from the UNICEF and WHO, and the other ones in red are the ones the country estimates. So there's a bit of difference, but the main message is that we are not uh, reaching all the children we need to reach. And even WHO uh, estimates that at the we are among the 10 countries with unimmunized children in the world. We're in the league that includes Nigeria, Ethiopia, the DRC, and Angola. So in a few years ago, we decided to ask the EPI uh, managers, the managers of the vaccination program, both at national level and also at subnational level, we asked them what they thought the main uh, problems were. And that was before the term hesitancy was invented. And so they thought that knowledge gaps among healthcare workers was a problem. The gaps in the finances for the, prog uh, for the program and gaps in terms of human resources. But they also mentioned anti-immunization rumors and reluctance from parents, which would fit in with uh, vaccine hesitancy. And uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Ross Burnett from Sefako Makato uh, University, did a presentation a few weeks ago where she looked at what has been done in terms of publication from South Africa, where mention was made about things that could be translated to main uh, vaccine hesitancy, lack of motivation. And it does show that there is quite, uh, there are people who are hesitant to receive uh, vaccinations from all of these studies, about all 3% in all these studies from 2003 to 2018 did not vaccinate because they lacked motivation or there was something they were hesitant in some way. And why should we measure vaccine hesitancy? We've uh, mentioned already the Sage Working Group uh, report from 2015, 2014, and also in 2017, the Sage in the assessment of the Global Vaccine Action Plan also indicated that we need to have a measure, countries need to measure uh, vaccine hesitancy. And these are some of the measures that have, uh, Villa mentioned the vaccine hesitancy scale, but there are a few others. And yeah, that have been, uh, that have tried to measure various components of the of vaccine hesitancy. But all of this, we are uh, done in high income countries. We read somewhere that they are weird countries, so <laughs> Western educated, industrialized countries. So, and that is why uh, my colleague Sarah Copper with uh, Cornelia, where they wrote uh, in this commentary that we wrote indicating that to us we think that uh, vaccine hesitancy is a problem, but we need to be able to measure it. And we should be, since it's complex and it's context specific, it is important that we have information from everywhere, from all types of settings, to be able to, to be sure that we are measuring the same thing. So the various, uh, we think that the limitations of the various uh, measures that exist now, they were designed for high income countries None of them has been validated in sub-Saharan Africa. The, a lot of them are lengthy. The vaccine hesitancy scale that Gila mentioned, uh, where she looked at the Likert scale, but there are other parts of it. So there are various items. Some of them are quite long. And 
they might not be able to capture everything that we want. So if we had a shortened scales that have been validate, validated in our setting, that might be very useful. A lot of them focus predominantly on confidence-related aspects, and we have seen that there are other aspects to uh, vaccine hesitancy. So, <coughs> and also, we think that for them to be useful, they need really to be concise, uh, to, to be useful in our environment. And they also, while well being concise, and uh, w they should also be com comprehensive enough to differentiate the various dimensions of vaccine hesitancy, whether we are talking about uh, confidence or risk calculation or convenience. And based on the multidisciplinary knowledge and expertise that uh, exists around, we think that all of this should be brought to play in the development of skills that should be validated uh, everywhere. So what will we achieve by having uh, validate uh, scales that are validated in other parts of the of the world. So in our setting, we think that they will be able to discern uh, concerns quite early. We'll be able to monitor vaccine hesitancy. We've said that vaccine hesitancy varies both with geography over time. So we have such scales which are validated. We'll be able to measure this and know that we are comparing apples with apples over time. And we'll be able to understand hesitancy levels and correlates of vaccine hesitancy. And we'll then also be able to differentiate between, uh, differentiate hesitancy from other reasons for suboptimal vaccination. I think very often people will say that vaccine hesitancy is not something for uh, low and middle income countries uh, like South Africa or other settings. But as you would have seen from the, that summary from my colleague, Ross Burnett, it does show that it is a problem. It might not be the main problem, but of course, if you don't look, you won't know. So it would, if we have validated scales, we'll be able to differentiate access related issues from vaccine hesitancy. And also, if we have validated scales that would enhance comparability of future res uh, research results, it will also improve uh, data quality over time and it will facilitate more evidence-based interventions because if we identify what the issues are in terms of vaccine hesitancy, then they would also inform us in terms of what interventions we do. So based on this, we are working on a, a proposal to do uh, assess vaccine hesitancy using the 5C uh, scale, which Cornelia will talk about later. And we want to do this in South Africa, in Kenya, in Cameroon and in Nigeria to be able to develop, our aim is to develop a validated measure of vaccine hesitancy in sub-Saharan Africa, see what the differences are and similarities across these countries and to develop capacity in sub-Saharan Africa for doing research on vaccine hesitancy and also to gain knowledge on vaccine hesitancy in the region and to develop an intervention plan to be able to reduce vaccine hesitancy in sub-Saharan Africa. And I would like to, in this work, uh, Sarah Copper from our center, Dorete, who is here, and Cornelia have been working with us. I am an epidemiologist, but I'm learning how to do behavioral science. <laughs> 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 Thank you.